Which capabilities the Dimension Element tool offers depends on the type of element that you select. If you select a linear element, the tool presents itself with linear options. However, if you select a radial element, such as an arc or a circle, the tool will present itself with radial options within the tool settings window. So let's jump into MicroStation, where we are going to dimension both linear and curved features throughout the building. Here we are inside of MicroStation, and we're continuing in the proposed restaurant DGN file. Let's ensure that the level A anno dims is our active level. Next, let's make the Dimension Element tool active. The Dimension Element tool is used to dimension an element that could be a line, line string, multi line, shape, circle or arc, or circle. In the tool settings window, we'll set the dimension style to arc slash, the alignment will be set to view, the mode, dimension element, and annotation scale is enabled. Now that our tool is set, let's come into the view, where our first task is to dimension the west exterior side of the building. For this, we'll zoom into the southwest corner of the building. We are prompted to select an element to dimension. So let's go ahead and select the outside wall line at columns B1 and B2. We'll bring our cursor in the upward direction and key in the distance of 900. Let's navigate the view to where columns A1 and B2 are located. We are going to repeat the dimensioning effort here by selecting the wall line along the left at columns A1 and B1, making sure that our dimension is 900 millimeters away from the building. So now we're going to turn our focus with this tool to the inside of our building, where we are going to be dimensioning the partial height wall in the dining area. So let's navigate our view to where column C7 is located. Here, we're going to dimension the partial height wall. So we'll go ahead and pick the wall and give an offset distance of 450 millimeters. We'll repeat this for the other wall face. So now let's move on to dimensioning the countertop at the sushi bar. So we'll navigate the view to where column B6 is located. Observe the tool settings window. So far, we have been selecting linear elements, so hence, the options displayed are for working with linear elements. Next, we will select a curved element. In this case, the arcs that make up the countertop at the sushi bar. So with the dimension element tool still active, let's select the inside arc of the countertop. Notice how the tool settings window has changed to reflect the options for working with this particular element type. From here, we'll change the dimension style to arch arrow. Now, we'll need to reselect the arc. We'll bring the cursor down and in the open space, issue a data point to place the radial dimension. Next, let's go ahead and select the outer arc and then place a radial dimension near the first radial dimension. So, with the dimension element tool still active, let's select the vertical outside line of the countertop at the right side. Notice how the tool settings window has changed back to reflecting options for working with linear elements. We will need to change the dimension style to be consistent with the other linear dimensioned elements. So that being said, let's make the active dimension style arch slash. We'll then select the countertop edge at the far right and offset the dimension a distance of 450 millimeters. During this lesson, you learned how to utilize element dimensioning and radial dimensioning. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.